Hello and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today no matter what it is you're doing. For our free wire tutorial today I'd like to share with you a way in which you can create heart shaped prongs or a little bit of heart shaped bezel wire. Now it's not quite the same as bezel wire but I think we'll all know what I'm talking about if I show you on the board now what we're going to create together today. So I've chosen a septarian nodule cabochon. It's relatively slim. It's not a particularly feminine gemstone, which is why I love pairing it with such designs as these hearts. So we're going to make multiple components to create this pendant. Now you can take the basic technique and use it in rings, at the center of bangles, even in earrings, whatever you fancy doing to capture a gemstone or a cabochon of another material. This could be one that you might find useful. So there are various components that we're going to create together today. We're going to create a frame that fits around the outside of your chosen cab. We're also going to create a section of heart wire which we will then hammer to strengthen. Then we will need to create a way to hold the cabochon in at the back. For my design today, I've chosen to use the Viking style netting, very, very similar to my dream weaver technique, which are a couple of old videos I'll link in this tutorial today. So the first thing that we're going to do is to create a frame that sits all the way around the outside of this cabochon. And for this, I've chosen to use one millimeter or 18 gauge wire. I have in my hands approximately 16 or so inches of wire, and I'm going to get that central section nice and warm. Now for this technique, we need this frame to be slightly larger than the cab itself. If we make it too tight, then the technique will be very, very difficult to complete. So we just need that to be a little bit larger, which when you warm the wire and you wrap that around the cabochon, I'm pushing very firmly down into a nice, secure, non-scratchy board. Even if you get that wire super tight around the edges of your cab, when you release, it tends to spring out a little bit, which is perfect because we want just a little bit of air space. So what I would do is just manually adjust that until it sits perfectly around the outside. So you can see I've really failed on that one. That's a little bit on the wonk. So you can take a little bit more time to get that absolutely perfect. What we're going to do then is put some upright bends near the top. Now, when I hammer this section, which is what's happening next, what I tend to do is avoid hammering the angle itself and any of the upright, purely because I'd quite like to be able to change my mind later about what I'm going to do. So I'm going to bring the frame to me, and then I'm going to put my pliers in and pop another upright at the correct position. Now there can be a little bit of a gap up at the top because I want to weave some wire in there later to create a bale. I'm just going to do a simple three and three basket weave standard bale a little bit later on. Just getting those uprights straight and out the way for now and making sure that this fits all the way around the outside with a little bit of a gap. So by the time I've put some weaving in there, that looks like it's probably going to fit quite nicely. So I also need a section to house my woven piece at the back, my Viking style netting. And this is what we're going to work towards creating, which is a small frame. Sits exactly the same size as our first frame we made together. But instead of having any uprights for bales, we've just got a pair of loops. So in order to do this, I'm going to grab myself a short length of wire. This is around about seven or so inches. And I'm going to grip hold of one end and get that super toasty warm. Now I'm just going to show you the back section ahead of time. This is what we're looking to make. There are two ways that you can achieve this. As I mentioned, I'll just pop a little note up in the corner right now for you to check back onto the two video tutorials that explain this. One is my Viking net for a drilled cab, which you can actually use for all cabs anyway. And going way back in time, there's my dream weaver tutorial. So that technique is available separately on those videos. You can, if you prefer, create a nice round form in exactly the same way we did a second ago, making sure those two wires cross over with a little bit of spare, trying not to put weird lumpy shapes in it like I just have. Just warm that through and we'll be able to rescue that, I think. 
pushing the cab down into the board again it's a nice soft secure board to work with and we don't want that to be too tight so that's actually fairly perfect now what you can do is just leave these ends on whilst you apply this technique or you can put the loops on now either will work and it doesn't really matter which way around that goes so just to turn those ends into loops we want the loops to come inside so I'm going to put the two loops into position first take the tail all the way around the outside continue to check that that still fits and I haven't overstressed that overstretched it out and then a loop on the other side as well now we do need them to sit side by side they can be a little distance apart but they shouldn't touch they shouldn't cross over so one loop slightly larger than the other so I'm just going to fix that now by turning that around ever so slightly once I'm happy with the shape and size of this part of the frame what I'm going to do is trim away any excess like so taking the flush side of my cutters in line with the edge of that frame wire making sure I'm cutting the correct bit and then making sure that I police the offcuts and get them in the scrap pot for melting later I'm going to take a second to get those to sit down flat you will still have access points to do all of that after you've added that weaving if you prefer you can still get in there and flatten them down because there's a gap over the top when you do that central section of weaving they're not completely even but you can obviously take a little bit more time making sure that that fits all the way around the edge with a bit of a gap so what we're going to do is hammer these two pieces completely and make sure that we're happy with the size and shape now when you are hammering a shape that you want to retain you will need to put a little bit of downwards pressure on it so I'm going to hold this really firmly like so making sure those two loops complete the circular shape now it would be more sensible with a larger block but I'm on limited space here so I'm going to support the frame mind your fingers and then when you get up to the corner where the loop is it's not a corner it's a circle how can it have a corner just going to need to make sure that you don't make the shape of the whole assembly change so I'm just pinching down really firmly And if you do find that it lifts because wire is want to do that what you can do is just bring that back into line try that on the cab and you can see that that's a really good circular form around the outside of the cab and that my two loops are touching but not crossing over I would then need to do the exact same thing with my other section and when I'm hammering this one I will need to be very careful that one shoulder doesn't come down like so so if you want to you can start off in the most volatile zone you could tape if you prefer I like to use my hands to press down making sure that those two shoulders are side by side but what I'm not doing is hammering the actual uprights because I may wish to change how they fit a little bit later So you should at this stage have got your front frame and your rear frame sorted. So we've got one of these done now. We've got our little back piece already woven and we've got a front frame which is going to circle all the way around the outside of our cab. So here's the fun bit. Let's make that heart shaped bezel or supporting wire together now and then we could do a little bit more hammering. So I have here around about 12 inches of that one millimeter or 18 gauge wire and I'm going to give that a little bit of a warm through just at the front edge 
going to work along from this end. You can warm the remainder as you get closer to it if you wish to. What we're looking to create is a section of heart wire that fits inside our main frame. So to start off with, we're going to go for a lovely loop using our round nose pliers. We're going to draw that tail all the way over the top. The end, of course, has got caught on my notepad, so let's just draw that out of the way, making sure that that loop meets the wire that continues along. So what we're looking to do is have a nice curvy section. You can support that loop and just draw that around a little bit. Fit that inside your frame. It's a little bit easier, in fact, to use the frame rather than the cab when we're building this next section. So let's just warm that a little bit more imagining that it's going to sit up here on one of those shoulders, one of the sides. You can have as many or as few hearts as you like. The main proviso really is that you have at least three hearts and in that way they should be secure enough to stop everything in conjunction with those loops at the top from falling out. If you have just two hearts you might find there's a little bit of a risk and you know let's have more hearts, let's put more love out there. So I'm going to just pop that loop in imagine that we've gone a little bit of the way around and I'm going to put my first heart in now. So the wire that we're looking at always needs to be kept in flat as if it's between two panes of glass. So I'm going to draw the tail of the wire back towards that first loop. It needs to be a reasonably sharp bend but we're not going to pinch it. What we're going to do now is use the round nose pliers to create a beautiful first half of that heart very very simple to do we're going to pop those pliers in you could if you wanted to have your hearts all exactly the same size use a permanent marker to just define the exact size that you're going to work with I'm just going to draw the tail across again the wire is always being kept flat now that looks to me like a large heart too large for my liking so if this happens to you you can pop those pliers back in open the wire up slightly and then just rotate the whole design around until the first heart is the first half of the heart is a pear shape that goes back and meets the baseline so you, this is your baseline this is what's going to sit inside that frame wire halfway between the fattest part of that pear shape and the baseline we're going to pop some fine pointed pliers back in so that's halfway along and I'm going to push the wire the long tail of wire all the way back out in the direction it's just come from so if I turn this over what we're going to do now is pinch this section that looks a little bit like a hairpin bend we're going to pinch that very very firmly now the wires will probably want to go one on top of the other it's your job to ensure they stay side by side as we pinch 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 Small movements, repeated movements will always give you a better, smoother look than one great big squish that goes wrong. Take your time with wire work. So that's the first half of our heart. What we're going to do now is make the second half. So if I put the pliers back in at approximately the same place we had it before, you can rotate the wire around or you can rotate your wrist around or you can do a little bit of both. So the second half of my heart looks just a little bit larger than the first. So if that happens to you, put the pliers back in just a little bit closer to the narrower side and very, very gently waggle the wire until you get the heart shape of your desires. What we're looking to do now is continue on with a baseline. So if I pop the pliers in like so, I'm going to put them in before where I think the baseline would continue. So it's a very small distance, but a small distance nonetheless. If I imagine the baseline is here, you can see the gap between my nail tip and the pliers. So once I put that bend in, you'll find that the bend occurs on that baseline. So you will get the heart shape that you desire. So that's just something that comes from experience and I wish to share that with you. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of work hardening in this heart shape. I am going to hammer the whole thing in a moment anyway. But what I want to do is grip the baseline and continue with that circular arcing form. So if I just turn the piece around until it fits in my hands how it is most comfortable for me. A little bit more warmth into that wire. Let's see how things are looking. So I need to bring this around just a little bit more closely. Like so. 
And then what I can do is continue all the way around with three hearts, four hearts, five hearts, seven hearts, however many hearts you fancy, to be used in lieu of prongs. So what I'm going to do now is just get the wire to fit and show you a piece that I made earlier on. Drop this one out of the way and bring this segment in. So this doesn't fit perfectly. I've hammered it already, but that's fine. It doesn't matter that it doesn't fit perfectly. What we're looking to do is just get that to fit a little bit better. And even though this has been hammered, we can change the shape ever so slightly. We warmed the wire before we started working. And we're just going to get that to sit down. That's a little bit better. So let's take this section out of the way because you will have checked uh, the other videos and you will have gone off and you will have made this webbing for the back. So there's one of our components. We've hammered both our heart wire. When you get to the end of your heart wire, we're just going to put another loop on like so. So you just continue around until you've finished as many hearts as you like. I would say a minimum of three, plus those loops will give you a nice secure front section. So just continue, make another heart down at the bottom, maybe a third heart and then a loop. Cut away with the wire crossing over at the top using the flush side and then making everything flat. And then give that a lovely hammer until that's as smooth and as hardened as you would like it to be. You will have one side which is slightly more textured and one side which is slightly more satinized from your block. So use whichever you think is best for you. So now you've got your three component parts. You've got the heart wire circling round, it's been hammered. You've got your main frame, which has been hammered. And you've got a back section with that netting to hold everything in position. I'm going to show you now how to start assembling everything to encase safely your chosen round cabochon. I'm working now with 0.4 millimeter or 26 gauge wire. Again, I'm working with round raw copper as is my preference. What we're going to do here is attach the heart section of wire to the main frame with those long wires up at the top, which we will then turn into a lovely bale of your choice later on. Now I have, as I say, around 12 inches. What I'm going to do to start with is find the six o'clock position on my main frame and just wrap twice, loose, not loosely, but apart with the center of my finer gauge wire. Now you'll see what I mean when I say apart, there's a gap between those two wraps. What we're looking to do is attach the heart wire to the main frame, whichever way we want to. Now, if you desire, what you can do is fill every single piece of this wire with wrapping. You will need a lot more than 12 inches. 12 inches of the finer gauge wire is enough to attach them securely. The jewellery will last for a long time and it can look attractive. If you want to absolutely fill it, you'll need a lot more wire than that. And you will always find uses for the offcut, so don't be afraid to unspool a good sort of four foot or something. You will find uses for it anyway. So what I'm going to do now is I've got my two open wraps down at the bottom. I'm going to start wrapping the frame and the heart section together. So I'm going to push the leading edge of the wire through. There's my first wrap around both. And what I my aim here is to keep the distance between each of those wraps the same. So if I just allow the light to glint on that slightly, you'll see how that's going to work. So again, I'm going to wrap around both until I have filled the space between the hearts. And then I will go back to do two open wraps around the, just the frame wire where there's a gap at the base of that heart. So I think I can probably get one more of those wraps in before I go to wrapping just around that frame wire. So push that all the way through and then all the way through again. So I've got two wraps around just that frame wire. And then what I'm going to do is continue all the way to the end. And I'm going to run this quite quickly because we've got a lot to get through and it's just the same thing over and over again. I'll show you on one side what to do when you get to the end. So wrapping around both of those pieces. When we get to the very end, I'm just going to wrap, but this time, instead of having a gap, I'm going to wrap those wires tightly together. Now, normally I would say go for three, but this is a lovely piece of jewelry that you will want to last forever. So I've gone for seven, and I would look to repeat that on the other side, 
trimming away around about an inch of waste wire there I'll probably still find a use for that anyway and then making sure that those last few wraps are super secure squish that into position once you've wrapped all the way around in the opposite direction what you will need to do is make sure that your heart section is sitting nicely inside your frame so the way I do this is just very very carefully now I've told you so many times don't ever press down when there's more than one wire involved what I'm doing here is very 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 softly just making sure that that inner heart wire is sitting nicely and neatly inside the frame itself so you'd continue to wrap continue to wrap until you get all the way around to the other side finish off with the seven tightly bound wraps as you move towards the top there so what we're going to do is then fill in this space up at the top i'm just going to take a, sh a second to make sure that these are like tram lines that they are indeed side by side and nicely parallel give that a bit of a squish and a squeeze and i would just then do around about between an inch and a half and two inches of three and three basket weave once i've done that i will come up a little way from those shoulders put a forwards bend in my woven section and create a simplistic bale so i've attached my heart section inside my main frame that's been completed on both sides i've also added some three and three basket weave up at the top and created a very simple bale now all it takes is for us to just tie everything together like a clamshell and safely enclose your cabochon into the woven and the heart shaped section permanently so your three components have become two components now we've got a front with that heart frame complete with the simple bale up at the top and then we've got the back with that viking style netting or dream weaving if you prefer that's going to sit over the rear of the design to hold it safe you can see if i press the cab into this circular form that ensuring you have a space all the way around is essential if you make that form too small your cab is not going to be able to fit comfortably inside so what we're going to do now is tie everything together so let's just assemble that quickly like so the ideal would be to centralize on the back those two loops that you created just central to the bale if that doesn't happen you're never going to be able to see it from the front it's not the end of the world however i quite like this as a pendant in and of itself cabochons are quite often only matte buff polished on the back whereas they receive a high polish on the front and i quite like that as a texture change so you can have one piece of jewelry flip it and it's two different feels so it's entirely up to you what you do but i would like to see that centralized now the thing that we need to do to make sure that this does last is to get a really good grip between the rear frame and the front frame so one way that we can do this is take the end of approximately 12 to 14 inches of that 0.4 millimeter gauge wire 26 gauge and i'm going to wrap three times inside one of those loops the reason i choose to start my weaving inside those loops is because it means that it won't have anywhere to go sideways once we get a really good grip with this wire and i might actually go for a fourth wrap in there because i can there's enough space and we do want this jewelry to last for a very long time so yes i'm going to go for a fourth wrap in there put that through as close as we possibly can to filling it up and then i'm just going to trim away the excess just past where the end of the wire goes over the section of the loop that we're wrapping into the reason i cut it just past there is because it means i can take that end section and just tuck it inside the loop before squishing firmly down now i have just broken my cardinal rule i've squished a section of woven wire or wire that has been uh, wrapped like a corkscrew around another piece of wire i haven't squished down so hard that it has damaged it i've squished it hard enough to know that it's not going to go anywhere it'll look nice and neat and tidy now so i'm going to place the design together like so all we're going to do here is sew things together now because my finer gauge wire has started underneath 
that loop it's coming from the underneath side rather than the over the top side on the outside I'm just going to take the tail of wire and put it inside the frame if I remove the cab for now and just draw these two halves of the clamshell together you'll see what I mean finer gauge wire is going inside the frame so it's coming to inside the frame now it's very tempting to start sewing everything together without the cabochon in please don't because what will happen is you'll end up going tighter on one side and then the cab will blot out on the other side and it won't look pretty so you need to get a really good grip with your non-dominant hand to hold everything together making sure that if there is a particular orientation for the cab that you want you get that set now making sure that those loops are centralized at the back and what we're going to do is just sew the two sections together now because my finer gauge wire has come underneath the rear section and underneath the front section I need to just draw the wire around the outside so it's going underneath first then over the top now the ideal would be to have the same sized stitches all the way around the frame they can be super tight together if you want them or they can be quite large like the ones I'm making so it's a sideways stitch it's coming underneath the frames to begin with going over the top and then back underneath on the return journey if you pull too tightly you won't be able to get the same level of distance between the cab frame and the cab itself all the way around so just keep making sure that that cab is pressed into the clamshell of your two sections let's take that wire underneath again finer gauge wire goes underneath the outer the rear frame and the front frame and then we're going to pull that through making sure we're not putting too much stress on it to begin with pull that nice and firmly tight but not so tight that it doesn't look pretty so again we're making sure that we're centralizing the cab in position and we're not putting too much pressure on this side before we get to this side so all you're going to do is continue around the cab in exactly the same way finding access points where you can and again I would say ideally trying to get the same sized stitches as you go so these are reasonably similarly spaced at the moment you can obviously take a little bit more time and you can look at your piece of jewelry from all angles before you pull that wire through i've obviously got to keep it oriented in a specific way so that you can see it on the camera pulling that through again i'm putting a fair bit of pressure on the opposite side of the cab at the moment because it means that it won't be able to skew too far to one side so as you start to draw the wire tighter in its stitch you can just sit that exactly where you want it to so that you get this repeating stitch style sewing with the finer gauge wire so all you're going to do is continue all the way around the outside and i'm just going to go a little bit further and then draw the wire across you can see we've got plenty of wire to work with all the way around to the back when you get up to the other side you can see that I've slightly skewed those two loops so that's something else to look out for make sure that you're not moving those two loops around too much let me see if I can straighten that up I can't so what I would do if I was making this to sell I would make sure that my two loops sat exactly where I wanted them to I would keep orienting every side of the jewellery to myself as I was doing that sewing it's actually not far off but I'm a perfectionist so continue all the way around and then when you get to the back if you can finish off with the same number of stitches as you started with inside those two loops on the viking webbing or netting then it will look really really attractive and finishing in the same place you started really gives a lovely attention to detail well thanks for joining me today i hope that you've enjoyed the heart shaped prong cab set as much as i have lots and lots of fun loads of different places that you can use it now the strength comes from the hammering of the hearts making sure that they're perfectly flat and they're really well spaced making sure that you've got at least three plus those two loops you can really finish the back however you see fit you could simply go from side to side and do a corset on the back if you prefer i really like having the two halves of the clamshell come together and that's an idea for a future tutorial right there have a beautiful day i'm gem hawks i'll see you again very very soon bye for now